What is up guys and welcome to today's One Minute Clinic. And before we get into it guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're trying to get to 2,500 so we can start working on these collaboration videos. We have a couple channels in the works that want to get with us. So let's try to get to that 2,500 so we can get those projects started. And if you want your questions answered and turned into a one minute clinic video, comment down below. I'll add all the questions to a list and they will get answered in the order that they're coming in. I will get to every single person's question. Today's question comes from a person called names are random. They said, I can get my second serve to kick pretty high sometimes, but depending on the ball's surface conditions and how much I'm willing to go for it, it's a second serve, so no point in missing it. It, it can, instead of kicking high, sit up at a nice height to be hit. I want my second serve that goes in reliably, but isn't quite so easy to attack on days when I am not getting it kicking up as much. What do you recommend? Now, I have a couple of simple things to recommend for this one. I did a video specifically on the second serve and the kick serve, which I'll link below. But for this type of question, there's a couple things that are very, very important. So let's get into this one. I love working on second serves because it's one of the things that I feel like is a key part to most people's games, whether it's good or bad. And for this one, this is no different. So let's put a minute on the clock and get started with today's one minute clinic. So my first piece of advice when it comes to kick serves or just second serves in general is probably the most important thing that people fall short on. And it's going to sound really cheesy and like a kind of a cop out answer, but you have to commit to hitting your second serve. The worst thing you can do is have this get it in mentality, because when you are just trying to get the serve in, you're giving up control of your serve. What I mean is, most people, when they go into get it in mode, they don't pick a target on the court. They don't pick an action on the ball. They just literally look at the box and say it has to go somewhere inside that space. And because that happens, you lose the ability to make any type of correction. If you're aiming down the tee and you miss the ball wide, then you can make those adjustments and do the corrections. But if your goal is just to get the ball in the box, the first thing that's going to happen is when you miss, you're going to start panicking because you don't know what to fix. Secondly, when it comes to committing to it, the action that you put on the ball, if you are being specific, is controlled by how much you commit to the serve. Think about somebody like Rafael Nadal's forehand. That heavy forehand that he hits, that's a fully committed shot. And that's why he's able to find such unique spaces on the court. It's a fully committed shot where he's going for these heavy angles or he's hitting spots on the court that you wouldn't be able to hit if you didn't commit fully to hitting that shot. And the serve is no different. You don't get the action. You don't get the bounce. You don't get the height. You don't get the angle that you want when your goal is kind of just to push it into the box. So my first piece of advice, and it's the most important one, you have to be willing to commit to your serve. You have to be willing to miss your serve and be fully committed to hitting it even if you miss. Once you start hitting your serve as if you know it's going to go in, your serve will actually go in more and your serving percentage will go higher just by the commitment to go for the serve no matter what the scenario is. Now, I'm not saying go for aces, but what I'm saying is don't get reserved and tentative when you hit these serves. Now that we've got the mental part of it out the way, the physical part is actually super easy. You have to break your kick serve into three separate parts to practice it and then put it together. First part is the height. Whether you want it to kick out or you want it to kick back, the serve bounce height is completely relative to the serve height that it leaves your racket. So there's no way you're going to hit a serve that clears the net that low that somehow miraculously comes up this high unless you're on a clay court and you're just getting one of those weird bounces. So don't think that because you're hitting with a lot of spin that somehow the ball's literal trajectory angle is going to change and then go higher. So in order to get the ball to bounce high, you have to be willing to hit the ball up higher. And that goes back to my original point of you have to commit to the serve so that you know that if you hit it this high, that you can pull the ball back down into the court. When you're hitting heavy forehands, for example, you go up with a lot of spin and you know that ball is going to drop because you've accelerated around the ball. So the kick serve is no different. You have to know that if you hit it that high, you can still pull it down into the court. Once you have the commitment to go for the height, and the full racket speed, that opens up that space way up here 
that will then make that bounce come back up and get in and out of that strike zone very quickly. So it's going to be here, and then it's already out of their strike zone as soon as that ball hits the court. When you go for this, commit to it, aim up, and then once you put those two things together, you'd be surprised how much more action you're seeing on the serve. So tip number one, got to get committed to the serve. Tip number two, you have to send the ball up with a committed swing. Tip number three is actually pretty simple, and it is also a mental thing, but it has technique involved. Pick which direction you need this ball to kick. If you want the ball to kick away from the person, meaning like you hit the ball out wide and then the second bounce goes past the doubles line, your job is to get the ball to travel to the side through the air. So your motion, if you look at me relative to the baseline right now, my motion needs to be more from my left side to my right side so that the ball follows that action and goes off the court versus me trying to get a ball that kicks and penetrates into the court, jumping into them and pushing that contact point back. Now my motion is going to carry more towards the court a little bit. I'm going to be more on the back of the ball as I hit up so that I'm hitting just like a normal topspin forehand. I'm having that action kicking towards the person. So when you're practicing this, I actually recommend alternating between getting a ball to kick to the side slowly and then getting a ball to kick forward and then get a ball to kick to the side and then getting a ball to kick forward. So looking at it from this angle, I would just hit the left side of the ball and make the ball do a slight little jump to the side that way. And then I'd hit the back of the ball and have the ball bouncing slowly toward the court. So then you go forward, side, forward, side. Do it slow, but committed. So racket speed and commitment are not the same thing. Racket speed means you're just literally going at a certain mile per hour. A committed swing is relative to your own skill level. Are you slowing down through the motion to make sure you get it right or get it in? Or are you comfortable and confident just accelerating through and knowing your racket's going to go to the spot that it needs to go? So when you're doing this one, committing to the swing does not mean you have to go for one that's going to have all that insane bounce and action to it. It just means that you know where your racket's supposed to end based on what your goal is. So when you practice this one, just be sure that you're confidently going through the motion and that you're picking the action that you're hoping to see. That's going to wrap up today's One Minute Clinic, guys. I hope it was helpful and names are random. I hope this was specifically helpful to you. If it wasn't, please comment down below. Let me know if there's anything else I can do. Again, guys, let me see you like and subscribe so we can get to that 2,500. And if you want your questions answered and turned into a One Minute Clinic, comment your questions down below. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.